In this module, we are going to take a look at the MTCs that control the upper extremity. Rather than look at each MTC individually, we are going to take a vectorized approach. With this approach, we examine the MTC's force vector in relation to the axis of rotation to determine the torque produced by the MTCs about that axis. A couple of words of caution before we begin. First, for this module, we will not be examining the MTCs that control the fingers or the thumb. Second, it's important to understand this module represents a simplified version of MTC function and joint control. We are going under the assumption that each joint would be moving in isolation. Multi-joint movement is a lot more complex than this, but hey, we've got to start somewhere. Third, we will not necessarily examine every MTC that creates torque about a joint. We will only be examining the major ones in this module. For this module, we are going to begin with the shoulder complex, and for the shoulder complex, we will begin with the scapulothoracic articulation. Now we are going to examine the scapulothoracic articulation together rather than looking at the individual joints of the AC joint and the SC joint. But remember, scapulothoracic motion is a combination of AC motion and SC motion, so any MTCs that are controlling the AC joint and the SC joint are controlling the scapulothoracic articulation and vice versa. First, we have scapular protraction, which is a force vector caused by the serratus anterior. Next, we have scapular retraction. Scapular retraction is caused by a force vector created by the middle trapezius, the rhomboids, and the lower trapezius. Next, we can look at scapular elevation and scapular depression. Scapular elevation is caused by force vectors created by the upper trapezius, the levator scapula, and the rhomboids, while depression is created by a force vector created by the lower trapezius, the pectoralis minor, and the subclavius. Finally, we have scapular upward rotation and scapular downward rotation. Scapular upward rotation is caused by a torque created by the serratus anterior, the upper trapezius, and the lower trapezius, while downward rotation is caused by a torque created by the rhomboids and the pectoralis minor. Now let's move on to the glenohumeral joint. In the sagittal plane, the glenohumeral joint has a medial lateral axis that goes through the humeral head. Any MTCs that has a force vector that is posterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will extend the glenohumeral joint, while any MTCs that have a force vector that are anterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will flex the glenohumeral joint. MTCs that will create a torque that will extend the glenohumeral joint include the latissimus dorsi, the teres major, and the posterior deltoid, while those MTCs that will create a torque that will flex the glenohumeral joint include the anterior deltoid, the clavicular portion of the pectoralis major, the coracobrachialis, and the biceps brachii. In the frontal plane, the glenohumeral joint has an anterior-posterior axis that goes through the humeral head. Any MTCs that have a force vector that is medial to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will adduct the glenohumeral joint. While any MTCs that have a force vector that is lateral to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will abduct the glenohumeral joint. MTCs that will create a torque that will adduct the glenohumeral joint include the latissimus dorsi, the teres major, and the sternal portion of the pectoralis major. While those MTCs that will create a torque that will abduct the glenohumeral joint include the middle deltoid, the anterior deltoid, and the supraspinatus. In the transverse plane, we have a longitudinal axis that goes through the head of the humerus. Much like the shoulder joint, the force vectors here are a little complicated, but we can see force vectors such as these will create a torque that will externally rotate the glenohumeral joint, while force vectors such as these will create a torque that will internally rotate the glenohumeral joint. MTCs that will create a torque that will externally rotate the glenohumeral joint include the infraspinatus and the teres minor. 
Well, those MTCs that will create a torque that will internally rotate the glenohumeral joint include the pectoralis major, the latissimus dorsi, the teres major, and the subscapularis. Now let's also look at motions in the transverse plane of horizontal ab and adduction or horizontal flexion and extension. Again, we can see here we have a longitudinal axis that goes through the humeral head. Any force vector that passes posterior to that will create a torque that will horizontally abduct or horizontally extend the glenohumeral joint. While any MTCs that have a force vector that is anterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will horizontally flex or horizontally adduct the glenohumeral joint. The major muscle we have that will horizontally abduct or horizontally extend the glenohumeral joint is the posterior deltoid. While the MTCs that we have that will horizontally adduct or horizontally flex the glenohumeral joint include the pectoralis major, sternal portion, the pectoralis major clavicular portion, as well as the anterior deltoid. Now let's take a look at the elbow. For the elbow, we have a medial lateral axis that goes through the humeral epicondyles. Any MTC that has a force vector that is posterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will extend the elbow. While any MTC that has a force vector that is anterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will flex the elbow. MTCs that will create a torque that will extend the elbow include the triceps brachii and the anconius. Those MTCs that will create a torque that will flex the elbow include the biceps brachii, the brachialis, and the brachioradialis. Now let's take a look at the radio ulnar joints. We have an oblique axis that will go through the radial head. Now remember, it's the radius that rotates. So only muscles that are attached to the radius can create a torque that will either supinate or pronate the forearm. If we look here, we can see any MTC that creates a force vector that's radial to the radius will create a torque that is a supinator torque, while any MTC that will create a torque that pulls that radius ulnarly will create a pronator torque. MTCs that will create a torque that will supinate the radial ulnar joints include the biceps brachii, the supinator, and the brachioradialis while MTCs that will create a torque that will pronate the radial ulnar joints include the pronator teres, the pronator quadratus, and the brachioradialis. Finally, let's take a look at the wrist joint. In the sagittal plane, the wrist has a medial lateral axis that goes through the capitate. Any MTCs that have a force vector that are posterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will extend the wrist. While any MTCs that have a force vector that is anterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will flex the wrist. MTCs that create a torque that will extend the wrist include the extensor carpi radialis longus, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, the extensor carpi ulnaris, and the extensor digitorum. While those MTCs that will create a torque that will flex the wrist include the flexor carpi radialis, the flexor carpi ulnaris, the flexor digitorum superficialis, the flexor digitorum profundus, and the palmaris longus. Finally, in the frontal plane, the wrist has an anterior-posterior axis that goes through the capitate. Any MTCs that have a force vector that's radial to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will radially deviate the wrist and any MTCs that have a force vector that is ulnar to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will ulnarly deviate the wrist. MTCs that will create a torque that will radially deviate the wrist include the flexor carpi radialis, the extensor carpi radialis longus, and the extensor carpi radialis brevis. While those MTCs that will create a torque that will ulnarly deviate the wrist include the flexor carpi ulnaris, and the extensor carpi ulnaris. So those are the MTCs that I would like you to know for the upper extremity. More information can be found in chapter 16 of Biomechanics, a case-based approach.